welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Sincerely KSO. If it is your first time to my channel, you're welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, you're welcome back, my darlings. If you subscribe to this channel, you're a darling. And if you subscribe to my music channel, you're a honey. If you subscribe to both, you're the best. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I had a blast New Year's Eve. I had so much fun. You can see I've lost my voice a little bit, but I am so happy, happy to see a new year, happy to enjoy the pleasures of this year. I see it being fantastic, beautiful, entertaining, prosperous, filled with good health. I have the best feeling this morning and I hope you feel the same way. So just walk into this year with so much joy, so much happiness. Walk into this year believing that the best things are going to happen for you. Amen. <laughs> That's my sermon. I lost my voice, so please bear with me. Okay, so All About Eve from 1950. This was requested by Scott Rooney. <laughs> Thank you so much, Scott. You've been a patron for a while. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. First time watching this movie, so before we get into it, please subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. This is the best reaction channel. We're the honey people. We're filled with love, joy, happiness. We take care of each other in the comment section. We're courteous. We're respectful. There's just a good vibe, a good aura because we are darlings. We love each other. We take care of each other. Mwah. If you're new, mwah, mwah, mwah. Welcome, 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 welcome. All right, I'm so excited. All about Eve. Um, the one that I just saw, I can see the cover. Um, don't know anyone. <laughs> I, well, it's the characters are so small, so maybe that I do. And I, but anyway, that's it. I, I'm excited to get into the reaction. All right. The Sarah Siddons Award for Distinguished Achievement is perhaps unknown to you. King for some time. <laughs> it is not important that you hear what he's... The occasion is its annual banquet and presentation of the highest honor our theater knows. Mm. And no brighter light has ever dazzled the eye than Eve Harrington. Eve. Oh. My name is Addison DeWitt. Oh, My native habitat is the theater. This is Karen Richards. She is the wife of a playwright. Therefore, of the theater by marriage. Lloyd Richards lectured on the drama. The following year, Karen became Mrs. Lloyd Richards. Meet Max Fabian. He is the producer of the play, which has won for Eve Harrington. Margot Channing is a star of the theater. Thirty-nine times have I placed in deserving hands such a young lady, young in years, but whose heart is as old as the theater. Tonight her dream has come true, and henceforth we shall dream the same of her. Oh. Oh, this one isn't clapping. Oh, this one too isn't clapping. Addison and Margot. Or no, Karen. Karen and Margot. Hey. Eve the golden girl, oh, the, Eve. the cover girl, the girl yeah, next door, Eve's the girl on the moon. Lloyd always said that in the theater a lifetime was a season and a season a lifetime. I'd become so accustomed to seeing her there night after night, I found myself looking for a girl I'd never spoken to. There you are. It seemed odd suddenly. You're not being here. What do you do in between the time Margot goes in and comes out? Just huddle in that doorway and wait? But don't you find it... Apart from everything else, don't you find it expensive? Standing room doesn't cost much. Eve. Eve Harrington. Oh my God, this the Eve. The Eve that won the award that we just saw. Oh, she used to be like, she was a fan. She was a fan of the Margot. Oh, she was a fan of the Margot, and now she's won an award. That's why they were not clapping. That's why they were not clapping. You can breathe it, can't you? What did she do? She she. Oh, magic perfume. Oh, 
Oh, I can see it already. Is that what happened? They're not happy with her. This playwright's wife and Margot, they're not happy with the Eve. She must have done something. About the North. Hi. Hi. Hello. Well, now, Miss Chan, I don't concert? think you can rightly say you lost the war. Pick... Lloyd, honey, be a playwright with guts. Write me one about a nice, normal woman who just shoots her husband. Who just shoots her husband. <laughs> You're talented, famous, wealthy. People waiting around night after night just to see you. Oh. Even in the wind and the rain. I brought her back to see you. Oh. You what? Oh. Just outside the, the door. The Eve, yes. The one who's been watching her show. The mousy one with the trench coat and the funny hat. How could I miss her every night, every matinee? How do you do, Mr. Richards? And this is my dear friend and companion, Miss Bertie Coonan. <laughs> Would you I'm like to tell him what I've enjoyed about how often you've seen the play? No, thank you. If I didn't come to see the play, I wouldn't have anywhere else to go. There are other plays. Well... Well, it started with a play before this one. Remembrance. Remembrance. Did you see it here in New York? Most important night of my life. I know that. Oh, oh, wait. I know this I voice. Ten the next, Commandments. The next. Oh, my. Pause, pause, pause. Oh, my God. Her voice is so. I don't know. What's her real name? Eve's real name. I don't know. She's in the Ten Commandments. The one with Sissy B. DeMille. She played. Nefertiri, Nefertiri, Nefert, yes, her voice, oh my god, you guys, you have to see the one, the one with your brainer, Briner, the one with, um, oh, what's his name, Charlton Heston, the one where, if you see when she was talking to him, when she was talking to Moses, there was a way her voice is, oh my God, it gives you goosebumps. You guys, I have to pause to really acknowledge this person. Oh my God. As she, as she was just talking and she was saying, um, da -da -da -da. and yes, in San Francisco, that is her, her signature sound. You know, I love Oh my oh she she did this thing with uh Moses when Moses was like when he was about to leave when she had discovered that he was not the Pharaoh's son and the woman his nanny wanted to to expose him and she said he will be your mourning cloth like she was she and she threw the woman off the roof she's mean she's mean but like she was like, you wouldn't leave to tell him. I have to, the nanny was like, I'm going to tell that he's not Pharaoh's son. She was like, you wouldn't leave to tell the story. And she flung him off the roof, prepared herself. Moses came through her door, and she walked to him. It was in color, color. That I think then color was just new. That's why I couldn't recognize her. This was in color, probably. It was her voice. It was her voice that threw me back. I'm sorry, but my voice sounds hoarse. You guys. That is it. That is her. I don't know her real name. But at the end of this movie, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. I love her voice. Play. Every performance. Every performance. Then, when the show went east, I went east. Mm. It got so I couldn't tell the real from the unreal. Except that the unreal seemed more real to me. When you're a secretary in a brewery, it's pretty hard to make believe you're anything else. Everything is be. Then the war came, and we got married. Eddie was in the Air Force. They forwarded the telegram from Milwaukee, the one that came from Washington. I figured I'd stay in San Francisco. I was alone. I couldn't go back without Eddie. What a story. Everything but the bloodhound snapping at her rear end. There are some human... The woman and doesn't... I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. It's just my way of talking. Forty-seven minutes from now, my plane takes off, and how do I find you? Not ready yet. Looking like I start shooting a week from Monday. Zanuck is impatient. He wants me. He needs me. Zanuck, oh. Zanuck, Zanuck. What are you two lovers? Only in some ways. You've already met. Huh? Where? He's wiping right here, the lipstick. Just a minute ago. That's nice. Oh. Tell you what. We'll put Stanislavski on his plane, you and I, and then go somewhere and talk. Good night, Margot. I'll call you tomorrow. Not too early. <laughs> I'll be at the old stand tomorrow matinee. 
Not just that way. As a friend. 80% of it'll go for taxes. And why? Carnivals, ballets, Indian tribal dances, Punch and Judy, a one-man band, all theater. Lutton Fontan, Betty Grable, Rex the Wild Horse, Eleanor Abduze, all theater. May not be your theater, but it's theater for somebody somewhere. I understand it's the latest thing, one earring. If it isn't, it's going to be. I can't find the other one. He can't take his eyes off my legs. Like a nylon lemon peel. Got any messages? What do you want me to tell Tyrone Power? Just give him my phone number. I'll tell him myself. Quite a girl is what's her name? Eve. I've forgotten they grew that way. That lack of pretense, that sort of strange direction. Suddenly I've developed a big protective feeling toward her. A lamb loose in our big stone jungle. Am I going to lose you, Bill? Mm. Am I? As of this moment, you're six years old. Already? Keep your eye on her. Don't let her get lonely. She's a loose lamb in a jungle. Don't worry. The next three weeks were out of a fairy tale, and I was Cinderella in the last act. The honeymoon was on. This one isn't happy. Birdie. Birdie isn't liking. She says she, she's overstepping her boundaries. She's getting close to Margot. Oh, see? See? I can see it already. Maybe she... she She'll be helping Margot practice her. She's an actress. Helping Margot practice her lines and probably learning it herself to steal Margot's position. Why else wouldn't they clap for her when she won the Sarah Siddings Award in the beginning? You know what I mean? And Birdie is suspicious of her because when, they were, when, when she was telling them the story of her life, Birdie was like, oh, that's an amazing story. See her, she's crying. She said, that's an amazing story, story that all that's left is the dogs barking. And da, 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 da. In other words, you're selling yourself. From now on, it isn't applause. Just something to do to the aisles get cleared. Watch you play that last scene a thousand times. Cry every time. You can certainly tell Mr. Sampson's been gone a month. You certainly can. Especially if you're me between now and tomorrow morning. You haven't noticed my latest bit of interior decorating. But you've done so much. They're lovely. Aren't they lovely, Bertie? Adorable. We now got everything a dressing room needs. While you're cleaning up, I'll just take this to the wardrobe, mistress. Oh, don't bother. Mrs. Brown will be along in a minute. No trouble at all. Oh, oh. She's got two things to do. Carry clothes and press them wrong. And don't let anybody try to muscle... Oh. Eve, we'd better let Mrs. Brown pick up the wardrobe. See what she was doing? She was practicing her dress. And and Marco is so is oblivious. She doesn't see anything wrong with it. Ha! Huh? Me? Oh my god. She's coming for your spot. Do you see what she's doing? She's there. Oh. You can even see she had positioned her neck. Oh, call, call. what call? Is this Templeton 899? Margo, what a wonderful surprise. What a thoughtful, ever-loving thing to do. Like opening out of town, but terrifying. There's nothing you can do. You're trapped. You're in a tin can. Sleep tight. Hey, hey, wait a minute. You can't hang up yet. You haven't even said it. Oh, now, Bill. It's stuff or not. It doesn't happen every day, and I want to hear it. And if you <laughs> won't say it, you can sing it. Sing it? Bill, it's your birthday. Now, many happy returns of the day. Many happy returns of the day. She didn't remember, maybe. No secret. I know all about the party. Eve wrote me. Eve. Oh. She did. She hasn't missed a week since I left. I love you, too. Good night, darling. See you. Eve has been writing him every day since, he, every week since he left. It was Eve who probably scheduled this call because she didn't remember. Remember? She didn't know. She has forgotten about his birthday. And a party has been set that Eve organized. Hey! Eve is coming for your man. You can't, oh, yes, yeah, she's seeing it. She's seeing it. She's dotting the eyes. How can she be writing? You didn't even know she had been writing your man every week since he left. Hmm. 
<laughs> you don't like Eve, do you? You want an argument or an answer? Well, let's say she thinks only about you anyway. How you walk, talk, eat, think, sleep. I'm sure that's very flattering, Bertie. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, it seems I can't think of a thing you haven't thought of. That's my job. See you at tea time. Is that your job? Who made it your job? By any chance did you place a call from me to Bill? Well, I was sure you'd want to, of course, being his birthday. And you've been so busy these past few days. I couldn't forget that. You'd never forgive me. Oh, really? You'd never forgive me. This woman, her voice is so... As a matter of fact, I sent him a telegram myself. Okay. From grown woman to grown woman. We don't need to talk. Just eyes. And the message is clear. Like, if you want to be a fool, be a fool. But don't say I didn't warn you. Mm-hmm. I, I even feel Those funny. Welcome home birthday party. Funny about night it. Night to go down in yes, the street. Yes, how can? Even before the party started, I... Extra help get you? And there's some loose characters dressed as maids and butlers. And there's a message from the bartender. Does Miss Channing know that she ordered domestic gin by mistake? I ain't dense, and he's been here for 20 minutes. Well, I certainly think it's odd he hasn't even come up to. Mmm, crazy with Eve. He hasn't even come up to... Okay. And she t answered the question. That wasn't asked. I love... I, Birdie's the woman. Birdie's the person who can be rude to you. Oh, she's running down to get her man. In the meantime, while we're on the subject, would you check about the hors d'oeuvres, Eve? The caterer forgot them. The varnish wasn't dry or something. So Pretty rare things. quality these days. A girl of so many rare qualities. So she seemed. And I'll have you know I'm fed up with both the young lady and her qualities. Oh. Studying me as if I were a sole and exclusive rights and privileges. Mm -hmm. For instance, what? For instance, you. Oh, good. Tell him you're my man. Yes. But I'm not going to. What? I'm too mad. Guilty. Mad. And to intimate anything else doesn't spell jealousy to me. It spells a paranoic insecurity that you should be ashamed of. God. Thank you, Eve. I'd like a martini. Very dry. I'll get it. Just like you. This girl has heard. Pause. 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 We have to get into what is going on. Hmm. This is why women get very insecure around other women. Well, it's not why, but it's one of the many reasons. Now, with women, we can tell that it's the simple logic for us. If you and I are friends and we get along very well, it means we have similar tastes. It starts, we have the same similar tastes with style. We like the same color. We might like the same style of dress. We might like the same food. We might like the same hobby. We might have the same hobby. It is not impossible for us to like the same guy. Whenever you see a woman trying to keep her man away from another woman, it's not only insecurities, it's a natural evolution. It's a natural, It's just see the science. There's the social science and there's the biological science, there's chemistry of science, there's physical science, there's also the science with regards our emotion. I know they say opposites attract, but when friends that <laughs> flock to birds, birds of the same feather flock together. It's the same thing with our relationships. A lot of times, friends who have friends might be attracted to the same, best friends who are, might be attracted to the same man. It's as a matter of courtesy and respect that you don't get involved with that man. But to say that there isn't a similar, because you all want this, you might want the same thing. Kind, Christian, tall, dark, handsome. Someone finds that and you're telling me you're not attracted. No, you might be attracted. You might look like, oh my God, girl, your man is so good. He's so good. God should get me the same kind of man. Mm. Point in, it happens, right? So she has, she and Birdie have been having that eye contact, adjusting. They, they, it was overlooked for the longest time. Like, like um, Karen was telling us, Karen Richards, the wife of the playwright, Mr. Richard, said that this thing happened in October. So this is June. 
when she won the award. So from October, let's say this is a few months in, Eve has studied Margot so much so that she's already dressing like her. Can you see both of them wore the same off-shoulder black? Took her suit that she gave her, adjusted it to make it look like the suit that she wore when she went, to, right? Now the drink, the drink. What did she say she wanted? She told her Bill Samson that she wanted. This is the same thing that she told Bill. As Bill was going up to see his fiance, he, he had, oh, I don't know if they're engaged, sorry, to see his woman, but Eve stopped him and was able to get his attention so that he didn't have need to go. Now, I'm not saying it might be that Bill is attracted to Eve or it might not because he's you know like i'm the kind of person if my when my husband's best friend comes home i i treat him kindly i don't give him the same romantic idolations that i do my husband no but i treat him with courtesy and respect because he's my they've been together he's protected my husband he's helped my husband supported my husband so i feel like this is my brother this is also someone of importance to my husband and when you find someone that is important to your spouse you, you want to treat them with the same kindness and respect and love right i'm not saying go lay down in bed no but you like you give them a meal you ask about their children you help support their dreams you make sure that they're comfortable if they're staying over with their family sometimes they're married sometimes they're not right so these are the things that you do in in showing that you care that is what bill is doing remember when he was leaving he told eve take care of her for me like this is i can see that she already likes you and i can see that you like her or love her you know take care of her for me he's back he's showing her courtesy they're engaging especially since eve is a very she's a good storyteller she's a good she engages people look at the moment she started telling the story of her life even birdie i'm sure she must have been eavesdropping came out of the room and said let me stay in the room with these people and begin to look pretty and objective putting herself out because she is looking at the other pictures like telling her this is a very good story all that's left is a violinist playing and letting us into the romantic storyline that you're presenting for a stage that is bill is giving her eve that courtesy because of the love that he has for his woman. And I love Bill. Bill is a man's man. Bill reminds me of my husband. He said, listen, I understand that you've had to be sharp with it. I understand that you can cut with your tongue because that is the environment with which you've been able to thrive in your career. But let me tell you, you will not sharpen those. Ah, I, that was it. Do you know why? Because I have been told the same thing. I remember, like most of you might know that I'm a lawyer. And I remember having this battle war of words with my husband. And we were going back and forth. And I was getting my arguments across. He was like, let me remind you, you're a lawyer in a courtroom. Look around you. This is not your courtroom. And you are not speaking to me as a lawyer. You are my wife. I am your husband. And we will communicate and that ended that argument there and then. I had to go back within myself to realize I wasn't supposed, this was not about winning an argument. This was about settling the issue at hand. He was not my opposer. He was my partner. Do you understand? So that was what Bill was trying to get her to say. Listen, I understand that in the stage you might have acted films in where you are the woman who had to steal another man's husband, or you might have been cut through with your director, with your something, because you had to rise. You were suspicious with everybody because even actresses, they might be, they might have to fight for roles and scripts and things like that. So everybody is a competition, is competition. Hello, Mrs. Richard. How are you, dear? Hello, Eve. Good evening, Mr. Richard. Oh. Mr. Fabian. Hello, Eve. Hello. Margo, nothing you've ever done has made me as happy as you're taking Eve in. Oh, I'm so happy you're happy. Now, look here. The general atmosphere is very Macbethish. Mm. Oh, is it over? Is it just beginning? It's just beginning. She drank it. Oh, oh, she's upset. It's going to be Ooh. a bumpy night. We've never met. Maybe that's why. Miss Caswell is an actress. 
a graduate of the Copacabana School of Dramatic Art. Is that Marilyn Monroe? Stop it. Is that? I had no idea you two knew each other. This must be at long last our formal introduction. See that man? Oh. Uh, that's Max Fabian, the producer. Now go and do yourself some good. Amen. Oh. oh. She's drunk, and Bertie's trying to probably give her coffee or something to make her cup. So. Where has it been laid out? It hasn't been laid out. We haven't finished with the embalming. Wouldn't you feel more natural taking a bath? You know nothing about feelings. Natural. Shall we say happier side? If my guests do not like it here, I suggest happier they accompany side. you to the new. You by any chance haven't got any bicarbonate of soda in the house? Of course I've got my car. I've got a box in the pantry. We'll put your name on it. I oh. love you. Come to the See, pantry. I love you, Max. Is she trying to make her man jealous? She's drunk. <laughs> the guy is assuring Bill that there's nothing here. She loves me like a father. Wait a second, she loves me like a father. <laughs> There you are, man. Give Eve Harrington a job in your office. More time to relax in the fresh air at a racetrack. Oh, I don't think it's such a good idea. Promise. You disapprove of me when I'm like this, don't you? Are you drunk? Not exactly. Yes. Sometimes. Spoken like a press agent. I know what I'm talking about, either. After all, they're my plays. Spoken like an author. Week after week, to thousands of people, you're as young as you want. As young as they want, you mean. Don't worry, Lloyd. I'll play your play. I'll, I'll wear rompers and come in rolling a hoop, if you like. You've got to stop thinking of yourself as one of the hundred neediest cases. Oh. What is it? But I do know the part so well. And every bit of the staging. There'd be no need to break in a new girl to an audience that came to see Margot Channing. Hmm. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. Oh, my God. This girl is a pretender. An understudy As a matter of fact, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be her understudy. Do you think Miss Channing would approve? Look at how she walked past her. Look at how Bertie walked past her like she was invisible, like she doesn't see her. Are you serious? Joint. It's only a fur coat. What'd you expect, live sable? We're a breed apart from the rest of humanity, we theater folk. You have a point. An idiotic one, but a point. Oh, I don't want to make trouble. Said idiotic. All I want is a drink. To be a good actor or actress or anything else in the theater means wanting to be that more than anything else in the world. Oh, why, if there's nothing else, there's applause. There's applause. I've listened backstage to people applaud. Look at her. You have to admire this girl, this Eve. She she loves. She she really went out. She's going after what she wants. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, I didn't Outside mean. of a beehive, Margot, your behavior would hardly be considered either queenly or motherly. I wish mm. I could have gone to Radcliffe, too, but Father wouldn't hear of it. A situation <laughs> pregnant with possibilities, and all you can think of is everybody go to sleep. It's a good thought. Non-professional. I think it's an excellent idea. Excuse me. Undramatic, perhaps. Pause, pause, pause. I have to say something here. So much is happening. It seems to me that I'm already speaking like they are. It seems to me, darling, that well, it seems to me that her bestie, Carrot, is from a wealthy family, right? They they must have met maybe their teen years and they became best friends. But Carrot is from a more affluent home. And Margot just said something. He said, oh, I could have um, been more, I could have approached this conversation with a little bit more finies, but, or class. But I, I didn't go to wherever you, and she mentioned something, maybe it's the school. And so that explains or excuses her crass or misbehaving in this period. So, but they're still best friends. And, you know, Karen somehow has come into her world because, well, not Karen has come into her world, but Karen married a playwright, which also 
enhanced Margot's rise to stardom because probably gave her good script stories. They admire her, they love her, they're family, best friends. You can see that the, the four, Bill and Margot, Karen and Mr. Richards, the playwright, they are all in the same, you know, business. But Karen must have been a, from a wealthy home, isn't out of place with the stars of Hollywood or the the stage because she already probably went to the proper schools, hung out with the proper people. That's by the side. If I'm to be just being the devil's advocate here, if Eve, I, I don't, because I don't think she planned it from the very beginning. Maybe her gift made a way for her or maybe she did plan it, but I'm waiting to see the end to see how, because it could have just been an innocent thing. Being a fan to someone like if just imagine if I met my favorite actress and I decided to just tag along with her and somehow there was an opportunity and I was good at it and then I took it up that is one thing that is one thing that oh the lines just fell for me but it's another thing for me to target that my favorite actress become her assistant slave under her work my way into being her understudy and then find a way to push her out so that I can take a role that she had. That is, I don't know if that, you know, I'm just giving you an example. That is a different scenario because one is a plot and the other one was intentional and the other one was unintentional. And right now, the way Eve is doing it. It's making it seem like it's a plan. It's a plot because now she targeted the friend and then she's talking to this person and she's putting herself in the circles. It wasn't Margot who held her hand and introduced her. Oh, this is now a playwright. I would like you to make her your understudy. Give her a role in your film. It's like she's carving her own way using under the pretense or under the guise of being an help a help to Marco. That's where I'm finding it difficult to really pinpoint because now it still looks a little bit innocent. She's still doing, can you please give me this opportunity? I always wanted to do that. There isn't, I don't see the snake yet presenting itself because it, you can, if you love act, if you love the stage and you want something. But the way I felt she should have done it is that if you truly love Margot and she's truly your hero, why don't you go and ask her? Ask her, go to Margot, Margot, can you make me your understudy? After all, Margot has given you access to everything in her home, access to her boyfriend, access to her clothes, access to everything in the household. Why do you think she will deny you this opportunity? Go ask her, go there and tell oh, can you give me this chance to be your understudy? That's why I don't like what Eve is doing. Because she's doing everything, like running circles around Margot and not telling Margot the true intent of what she wants. That's what that's my problem. I said what's attractive on stage need not necessarily be attractive off. All oh. right. Oh. Take my clothes off, hold my head, tuck me in, turn out the lights and tiptoe up. Too bad. We're gonna miss the third act. Mm. I'm gonna play it off stage. And every now and then, there is nothing I want to do so much as kick her right square in the pants. You won't forget, will you? What we talked about before. No, Eve. I won't forget. People got lucky too late. The audition is over. Caswell, I promised Max. Well, the audition was called for 2.30, and it's now nearly 4. Is it really? I must start wearing a watch. I never have, you know. State of pregnancy. I refer to your new and unpregnant understudy, Miss Eve Harrington. What? Eve. Margot, as you know, I've lived in the theater as a Trappist monk lives in his faith. I have no other world, no other life. In time, she'll be what you are. A mass of music and fire. The implication being that I have not been reading them as written? To the best of my recollection, neither your name nor your performance entered the conversation. Tell me Ooh. this, do they have auditions for television? This man is That's, incredible. Uh, all television is, my dear, nothing but audition. Ooh, see, he gave her the, the, ooh, ooh. Eve must have scheduled their appointment the wrong time. So she wouldn't have made it in time to know, to see her audition. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
terribly sorry. I was late. Lunch was long, and I, I couldn't find a cab. Where's Miss Caswell? Shall we start? Oh, hello, Eve. Oh, how enchanting. However did you two get the idea of letting Eve read with Miss Caswell? Well, she's your understudy. I can't tell you how glad I am that you arrived so late. Really, Eve? That you arrived so late. Why not? Oh. If you'd come in the middle, I would have stopped. I couldn't have gone on. You were about to tell me about Eve. You'd have been proud of her. I'm sure. She was a revelation. Oh, to you too. She was a revelation. He said to you too. Also, it must have seemed so so new and fresh to you, so exciting to have your lines read just as you wrote them. Addison, they know who has You've been talking to that air. venomous fishwife, Addison DeWitt. In this case, apparently, as trustworthy. This genius of yours for making a barroom brawl out of a perfectly innocent misunderstanding at most. Perfectly innocent. Where is she Princess Fire and Music? She's oh. ran away. The kid, Junior. The hmm. gong rang. The fight's over. Calm down. No. I will not calm down. Yes, me Don't too. Calm down. Little Nell from the country be in my understudy for over a week without my knowing it. How can she be an hidden. understudy without her knowing? Bill I am sick and tired of these paranoic outbursts. Paranoia. It's not paranoia. No, Eve Harrington was your understudy. It's of a kid like Eve to turn you into an hysterical screaming harpy. Now, once and for all, stop it. I can hear her breathe. But I don't you understand her frustration. Honey, I love you too, but Eve is plotting. And there's nothing you can do about it. But don't let her steal her her, her it's role. It's obvious you're not a woman. Yes, you're I've not. been aware of that for some time. I'll admit I may have seen better days, but I'm still not to be had for the price of a cocktail. Margot, let's make peace. Yes, Terms are too baby. high. Unconditional surrender. Don't. Don't quarrel with your boyfriend. But if I tell you what it is as I just did... Okay, I believe you. Him? Listen to him. Listen to him. He might be... It's Eve that is plotting. Don't think they're, they're in on it. If we got married? Oh. I can't think of anything else to do. I wish I could. You know, there isn't a playwright in the world who could make me believe this would happen between two adult people. Carl, why? Don't let her let you lose everything. He told you it isn't. He told you. He told you it isn't. He's not in love with Eve. Why would you believe him? I don't, oh my God. Lord. She's par. Oh my God. Eve is the one. She orchestrated everything. Understanding, young, exciting, vibrant. Don't run out of adjectives, dear. Everything a playwright first thinks of wanting to write about. We're driving out to the country tomorrow night. Just the four of us. Bill, Margot, you and I. My big idea came to me just sitting on a couch. That boot in the rear tomorrow. And there were only two people in the world who would know. Also, the boot would land where it would do the most good for all concerned. He's on my list of things I'll never understand, like collecting shrunken Indian heads. It's important whether you do. We are wearing long underwear. <laughs> oh, my God. No gas? Empty? Stop it. Well, I guess I didn't look. You know I don't pay attention to those things. Just incredible. How much time have uh. you got? Well, no sense in just sitting here. I'm going to walk up about a half a mile, just in case. I haven't been very pleasant this weekend. We've all been a little tense lately. Besides something spelled out in light bulbs, I mean. Besides something called a temperament. But me, not Margot Channing. And if I can't tell them apart, how can he? Not to you, not to Bill. Isn't that what they always say? Honey, business a woman's Better career. The things you drop indeed. on your way up the ladder so you can move faster. There he is. Without that, you're not a woman. You're something with a French provincial office or a... Don't give it a thought. One of Destiny's merry pranks. After all, you didn't personally drain the gasoline tank mm. yourself. Many of the audience understandably preferred to return another time to see Margot to attend an understudy's performance about which oh. the management knew nothing until they were forced to... Well, after all, the other day was one scene. The woods are full of one scene. Isn't that the dress? But you did it. Tried it mm. Names I've been oh. called, but never Svengali. Oh. Good luck. Ever since that first night here in this dressing room. When I told you what every young actor should know? I'm in love with Margot. Hadn't you heard? Good. Good job. I'm only human, rumors to the contrary, and I'm as curious as the next man. 
find out. Only no. Don't cry. Just score it as an incomplete forward pass. Oh. You're a witch. You are. Look at your de your horns are coming out. Please do. I think the time has come for you to shed some of your humility. It is just as you say. Be less humble. Blow my own horn. How would I do it? Well, let's have a minimum of pretending. I shall want to do a column about you. I'm not even enough for a paragraph. I say your idolatry of Margot started in San Francisco, didn't it? Th that's right. Untouched by the earthquake, or should I say fire? Untouched uh, tell me, the what was your husband's name? I'm about to go into the shower. I won't be able to hear you. Oh, well, it can wait. Oh. oh, my God. Don't tell me that Eddie's story was a lie. There's no Eddie. She didn't go to the San Francisco. This doing, he, you see, he's a true fan of Margot. But I think he's also a business. He's going to unravel this girl. Pause. Pause, 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 pause. Hey! Oh, Eve! I've heard the most wonderful things about your performance. Mostly relief that I managed to stagger through it at all. By the smartness of your dress, I take it that your luncheon companion is a lady. Margo. Why not read my column to pass the time? The minutes will fly like hours. Thank you. Why don't you read my column? What did she write? She probably wrote about Eve. He, DeWitt, probably because he was a columnist, right? He writes. What did he say about Eve? Karen, Karen, oh, Karen is grabbing the chair. Oh, she's getting up. She's getting up in shock. About the lamentable practice in our theater of permitting, shall we say, mature actresses to continue. Mature actresses. To encourage, shall we say, younger actresses about Miss Harrington's own long and unsupported struggle for opportunity. I shall personally stuff that pathetic little lost lamb down Mr. DeWitt's ugly throat. Hmm. Mm, Bill. He came. He must have read it. I came as soon as I read that piece of film. I said it. I ran all the way. That's what she said. She told you all along that this woman was after her. Said I ran. Uh oh, oh, honey. Oh, you're such a lovely man. Bill's here, baby. Oh, Bill's here, baby. Oh. He loves you, girl. He loves you. He said, I ran all the way and says you can go. I guess at this point, I'm what the French call the trap. Maybe just a little around the edges. <gasps> She's embarrassed, said the mature. Why did, why did he do that? Why did DeWitt talk about her like that? Wanted to explain about the interview. Wanted to apologize to someone and didn't dare face Margot. You know, I've been see. going over our financial condition, if you'll pardon the expression. That's quite a change of subject. Since I'm a playwright and not an oil well operator, well, I've been thinking... I'm trying hard to follow you. If we can cast it properly, that is. Oh, really? Maybe get some younger actress for the part? Just for once to write something and have it realized completely. For once not to compromise. You must be joking. Margot Channing's not been exactly a compromise all these years. Why, half the playwrights in the world would give their shirts for that particularism you refer to. I acquired the day I discovered I was different from little boys. Uh, no, 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 not at all. In the world? Is this girl just poaching everyone that is around? Why, yes, I'm sure we can, and I'm sure we'd love to. Right. Margot Channing in the cub room. Hmm. I couldn't be more surprised if she'd said Grant's tomb. Fine and dandy. Just refer all of Miss Eve Harrington's future requests to me. Yes. To me. Yes, The so-called art of acting is not what for which I... He does not exaggerate. I was good. You were great. It's been quite a night. Somebody's got to be very witty about a toast. I shall propose the toast. Without wit. To each of us and all of us. Never have we been more close. May we never be farther apart. Yes. Feel. Thank you. Well, this beats all world's records for running, jumping, or standing. Go oh. I understand she's now the understudy in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's Rasputin. Rasputin. Hmm. Go on, find out. Karen, 
during all the years of our long friendship, I have never let you go to the lady. I am no, busting I to find out what's going on in Me that too. feverish little brain waiting in there. Me too, feverish little brain. <laughs> We're using you, Karen, for gossip. Go ahead. Karen. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, nice. Ooh. Very effective, but why take it out on me? <laughs> Do it, you're terrible. Just for the money or for, you know, a for the new story. That's what he's doing this for. Can't we sit down just for a minute? I've got a lot to say and none of it's here. Never the wrong word at the wrong time. Mm. But then I'd never met Addison DeWitt. As if my mind was someplace outside of my body and couldn't control what I did or said. And you felt just like that talking to Addison. Except that the responsibility is mine. And the disgrace. Eve, don't cry. I'm not crying. I think you're painting the picture a little blacker than it is, really. He's not my friend. You were my friend. He can help you. I wish I'd never met him. Nothing is forever in the theater. Whatever it is, it's here. And believe it or not, if there's anything I can do. There is something. Oh, really? You want to play Cora. You want me to tell Lloyd I think you should play it. If you told him so, he'd give me the part. He said he would. I don't think anything in the world would make me say that. Addison wants me to play it. Over my dead body. That won't be necessary. You better sit down. You look a bit wobbly. I'm so happy I can do something for you at long last. How long, even in the theater, before people forgot what happened and trusted you again? You do all that just for a part in a play. I'd do much more for a part that good. I'm not surprised after all that humble pie. Nothing of the kind. And Karen mentioned, of course, that Margot expects to play the part. Oddly enough, she didn't say a word about me. She'll be happy to do what she can to see that I play. Sometimes I think you keep things from me. I hope you mean what you say. I intend to hold you to it. What happened? Nothing much. She apologized. With tears. With... May I have a wedding present? What would you like, Texas? I want everybody to shut up about Eve. You know, she probably means well after all. She is a louse. Never try to outguess Margot. I don't want to play Cora. What? <gasps> now, wait a minute. You're always so touchy about his plays. It what? Is a part. It's a great part. And oh, my God. Karen. Oh. I don't oh. have to play parts I'm too old for. Just oh. because I've got nothing to do with my nights. <laughs> oh, my God. Karen, you're, it's as if the weight has been lifted <laughs> off her shoulder. Because she didn't know how to tell her best friend. You know, she had just been threatened by Eve. Oh, and now it's all working out for her. That her <laughs> friend doesn't want the role, doesn't want the part. So the threat doesn't make any se sense. The threat is n nonsense because she's free. I'd never known Bill and Lloyd to fight as bitterly and often. And always over some business for Eve. And I thought it might be best if I skipped rehearsals from then on. How could I compete? Everything Lloyd loved about me, he'd gotten used to long ago. Who? Who's calling, Mr. Richards? My name wouldn't mean anything. I, I room across the hall from Eve Harrington. Hello, hello, this is Lloyd Richards. Where is Eve? Let me talk to her. Hello, Mr. Richards. Tell her not to worry. Tell her I'll be right over. Oh, my To the God. theater world, New Haven, Connecticut. Just like it. And tomorrow morning you will have won your beachhead on the shores of immortality. It'll be a night to remember. It'll bring me everything I've ever wanted. Mm. Plenty of time for a nice long nap. We rehearsed most of last night. The mark of a true killer. Sleep tight, rest easy, and come out fighting. I've got something to tell you. Well, do you really? What do you have to tell him? Anytime you talk like that, we know a bigger lie or a story. Something to tell you indeed. 
What do you want to Sweets tell? Sweets are for expense accounts. Aren't you being extravagant? Yes, so frenetically devoted to Lloyd, one would think that only death or destruction could keep her. Addison, I didn't mean just the theatre. What oh, else? You're taking Karen's husband. You must be joking. Seriously? I'm in love with Lloyd. Lloyd Richards is the most successful playwright in America. You have no right to say such things. Lights on dimmers and gypsy violins off stage. Addison he he is fantastic. He doesn't. He's, he can't be fooled. Couldn't go on with a play or anything else until I promised to marry him. No way. Did he really? That's a lie. You sat and talked until it was light? We sat and talked, Addison. There never was and there never will be another like you. That you have the same contempt for me as you have for them. But right now I want to take my nap. It's important It's important that I... right now that we talk. Killer to killer. Mm. Champion to champion. Mm. Yes, tell her. Plainly and distinctly and then get out so You're I can... a liar. Very well, plainly and distinctly. You wanted him to run a false story. What I'm going to say, Lloyd may leave Karen, but he will not leave Karen for you. What do you mean Ooh. by that? I've come here to tell you that you will not marry Lloyd or anyone else for that matter, because I will not permit it. Ooh. Because after tonight, you will belong to me. Belong? Yeah. <laughs> he slapped her. Never to laugh at me, at anything or anyone else, but never at me. To begin with, your name is not Eve Harrington. It's Gertrude Sloshinsky. What of it? <laughs> it got less and less, dull until your boss's wife had your boss followed by detectives. She never proved anything, Ooh. not a thing. No, no, you're not running from this girl. You are not running from this. That $500 brought you straight to New York, didn't it? She was a liar. She was a liar. Answer my question. Weren't you paid to get out of town? <laughs> Girl, stop with the theatrics. You've never been married. That was not only a Ooh. lie, it was an insult to dead heroes and the women who loved them. Cisco, that was a stupid lie, easy to expose, not worthy of you. I had to get in to meet... Dramatic. And she did like you. She helped and trusted you. You paid her back by trying to take Bill away. That's not true! I was there. I saw you and heard you through the dressing room door. Oh, liar. Oh, DeWitt! Please, please. Please, nothing, witch. Well, this strikes me as the height of improbability. And you realize and you agree how completely you belong to me? Yes, Addison. You'll give the performance of your life. <laughs> You ran and ran and ran and ran into the arms of the devil. What? What? Beautiful. Addison is the hero. The performance of her life. And it was that she won it. She won what the Sarah Sidden Award. Oh my God. Are you serious? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Distinguished guests, wow. ladies and gentlemen, in good conscience, I must give credit where credit is credit due. To, you. Where? to my first friend in the theater, Karen. Karen. Oh, Mrs. Lloyd Richards. It was Karen who first brought me to one whom I'd always idolized, and a great woman, Margot Channing. If you want me back. Oh my God. Oh my, bravo, girl, bravo. But I wouldn't worry too much about your heart. You can always put that award where your heart ought to be. <laughs> where your heart ought to be. Here, take it to the party instead of me. Oh. You're being very childish. See? All the success in the world, no friends, and she's not happy. She got what she wanted, but she lost, she sacrificed so much for it. Unlike unlike Margot, who still maintained her love, her lover, and her friendships. They 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 loved her authentically. They loved her. 
but she didn't even have that and she already dived into ambition. Fantastic actress, even her voice. I love her voice. To be honest, I, I love Eve's voice. It's so captivating, so sexy and... Oh, who is that in her? Who is that in the mirror? She hasn't seen someone. Please don't have me arrested. Please, I didn't steal anything. You can search me. You know the Eve Harrington clubs that they have in most of the girls' high schools. I've heard of them. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. From the trunks you're packing, you must be going Baby to Baby Eve, time. that's she, this girl. See it. See it circle. See the full, see it happening, her karma. That spill drink's gonna ruin your She car. can't see it. You rest. I'll get it. Indeed. That's how you got in, Eve. Your karma has come for you. Miss Harrington's resting, Mr. DeWitt. She asked me to see who it is. Mr. DeWitt. Oh, well, we won't How? disturb her rest. It's... Tell me, Phoebe, do you want some day to have an award like that of your own? Just a taxi driver, Miss Harrington. You left your award in his cab and he brought it back. Wow, 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 wow. This, this is such a fantastic film. I cannot, I can't speak to, I cannot, 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 cannot. It is so true about karma. It is so true about life. It is so true that whatever you sow, you reap. It is, it is, it, and it is so easy for her to have seen what Phoebe's intention were, were, but because she has been cut up, time has passed. She see it, it, this thing was a short time, like they said. It met in June. She met Margot in June, and by she met Margot October the previous year, and by June she's already getting this. But how can so much time pass that you forget who you are? You started out a thief. You started out a pretender. And yet you found there's always someone that's going to outsmart you with your game. Fantastic acting. I love, love, love the voice of Eve. I just cannot. I can see her name here. Anne Baxter. That woman is just fantastic. Betty Davis as well, Margot, fantastic. Her friend, Karen, I don't know, I've never seen, I don't think I've seen her before, but I just, oh my God, this, all the actors were great. With every, the truth is that Margot had her insecurities because of her career, because of her life, because of her upbringing. Those things made her the person that she was. They, she was very worried and she was in a in a profession that really thrived on a woman's appearance, how you look, how you talk, how you present yourself, of course, it wasn't, it was a matter of time before, you know, she would be aging and she'd recognize that and also be insecure about growing old in a profession where her beauty is of immense significance as much as her talent. Um... Eve came in, and it's so crazy how Eve, you know, Eve in the Bible was the one who begot, you know, the devil went to her, and he was the one who convinced Adam to eat the forbidden fruit. Adam already didn't, had the instructions not to eat it, but Eve went in and, you know, why don't we just taste? Do -do 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 -do. And that is Eve's position in this film. She didn't start out being aggressive. She was like, why don't I just help you? She came in with a picture of help, assistance, care. And that was something, a friend, some something that, you know, made, um, that fed Margot's ego because she was feeling already insecure. And there was someone telling her, you're still the best actress. You're still wonderful. Everyone wants to be like you. You're the this and that and that. Fed her with the things she wanted to hear. The same way Phoebe came into her, 
Margot had, um, Eve had lost all her friends, had no one in a corner. And that there's this girl telling us we have a whole society to your honor. We admire you in school. The girls are looking up to them that feeding that, that same thing that she was lacking. The smartest person in this film was Addison. Addison stood, said, listen, you think you've got venom? I'm watching you. I am the ultimate devil. You think you are one or a smart me coming to tell me this story about you and the playwright? You must be joking. So you want to get out of my claws? It was a lie. She knew that Addison, that's why she kept twisting the story. When Addison asked her, what did you discuss with Karen up there in the back? She said, nothing. Nothing took you how many hours? Indeed, he observed how Karen came out. Karen walked it past him, not saying hello. Karen has always been a symbol of courtesy and, you know, classy lady. And there she is storming past him to the washroom, coming back, feeling, you know, you could tell from her demeanor that she was shaken by the conversation she had had with Eve in the powder room. And you're telling me, me, a seasoned columnist, uh, reporter, re writer, you, <laughs> you must be joking. He went, he had a private meeting with Karen, got the details, and that was the end of the gingerbread boy. But Addison was the best. His voice to narrating the story. Oh my goodness. But I have to watch it again. It's one of those movies. I love that Bill was 100, 100% loyal to his woman. <coughs> Excuse me. I love that he was. He was loyal to his woman. He was loyal to her, even in spite of her flaws. I'm so happy he didn't fall for that trap in the dressing room of Eve trying to trap him into that entanglement. I was like, really? He said, I like to chase my woman. I don't like my woman chasing me. And <laughs> and that was the, you know, the ladylike thing that um, Margot was so good at, you know, flipping her hair and turning on him. And he's like, no, I don't want you. No, no. You know, that sort of thing. She was always pushing him away, pushing him away. And he kept coming because he loved her. And he was, in, he was enjoying the game. But until it beca became so like, when will this end? He said, I've asked you before to marry me. I've asked you before. Let's do it. And you keep saying no. Why? Oh, my goodness. That actress too, the Phoebe girl, she, I don't know, I don't know where I've seen her, but her face looked so, I don't know where I've seen her. I have to be watching more of these black and white movies. I just enjoy it so much. The acting was superb. How I ended, Betty Davis, I love that song. Oh my goodness, I, I love the story. Even, I'm not even mad at Eve. Excuse me. I'm not mad at Eve at all because she was in pursuit of her career. She was in pursuit of 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 her dream and she was willing to do anything to get it. That's why do whatever you want, but be ready to bear the consequence. Be ready for the punishment for your actions and your cruelty. That's all. That's all I'll say about that. Do whatever you want. Go after what you want. Decide, on, but bear the consequences. And her karma came back to her. And that Phoebe even looks even more cruel. For, because, oh my goodness. she. Oh my goodness. Oh, I wish I could see what Phoebe was going to do. But it's probably the same cycle. The only bad thing is that Margot, Eve, Margot had people in her corner who were willing to throw the actress Eve away and hold on to her, their friend. Eve has no one. Even that Addison could already, can already see. Can you see him closing the door? How do you know my name? You want to be an actress? Okay. He's done the plus, plus, plus. All right. Thank you, Scott, for requesting this. On to the next.